There's 50 miles ahead of you, a 35 pound pack on your back, and 20 hours on the clock. Could you make it before time runs out? Stay tuned for on this episode of The Evolving Warfighter, we're going to be talking about a stoic toughening challenge that will challenge you to become a bull. Welcome back to The Evolving Warfighter. My name is Dr. Franklin Annis, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about a 50-mile exercise and stoic toughening training. Now you may ask, well, what is stoic toughening training? Well, it was a technique developed by ancient stoic philosophers of voluntarily engaging in hardship to build resilience. Depending on what technique was used, this might just be psychological resilience, but might include physical fitness as well. This is definitely the case in the challenge that I'm about to explain. The name of the challenge, or Becoming a Bull, comes from a quote from one of the ancient Stoic philosophers, Epictetus. A bull does not become a bull all at once, any more than a man acquire nobility of mind all at once. No, he must undergo hard winter training, and so make himself ready, rather than hurl himself without proper thought into what is inappropriate for him. The activity of ruck marching, or hiking with a weighted pack, was selected for this challenge. If we look through military history, the ability to carry your arms and equipment was a critical importance all the way back to the ancient Greeks. Even on the modern battlefield, this skill is growing in importance as the weight that soldiers must carry on the battlefield continually increases as technology is added uh, to individual soldiers. The service members out there that decide to take on this challenge will have the benefit of engaging in the practice that is still needed in their profession. But even if you're not a soldier, you may consider taking on this challenge because there are numerous benefits to hiking while carrying a weighted pack. The activity serves as both a cardiovascular workout and a muscular strength workout all combined together. It took me a while to develop this challenge as I was looking for something that would really test my skills and ability in road marching. In the past, I've marched several marathon-length road marches, such as the Bataan Memorial Death March. Now I find that I can cover that distance with relative ease, so I needed something more. While I was looking through books on military history, I came across an executive order, one written by Theodore Roosevelt. It was Executive Order 989, designed to test the physical abilities of Marine Corps line officers. This test included the requirement to march 50 miles. These 50 miles could be divided over three days, but the time spent marching and taking breaks could not exceed 20 hours. Now, when I saw that time and distance requirement, I thought to myself, now that would make an exceptional challenge. But if Marine Corps line officers were given three days to accomplish this task, maybe an old soldier could get it done in one. And hence the challenge was born. I had in my mind a quest, could I cover 50 miles of continuous marching within a 20 hour time limit? Now I'd like to say I was successful the first time that I ever attempted this lofty goal, but in reality I failed on my first three attempts. My first attempt I was just not physically prepared for the march. I made it all the way to 43 and a half miles before Essentially, my hip flexors became so fatigued I couldn't go on. And I have vivid memories of that day having to grab the, the pant legs of my pants to pull them up to be able to walk up the steps to my apartment. My next two attempts I attempted during the summer months, but unfortunately with the heat and high humidity, I was simply not able to carry enough water on me to stay hydrated through those marches, just because how spread out the water points were. And this was the case when even when I was carrying six liters of water on me at a time. Needless to say, I was very hopeful on an early Sunday morning at 3.39 a.m. when I stepped off into a very brisk, cold morning to try my hand at making those 50 miles in 20 hours. I had very high confidence because the cool weather and the low humidity gave me 
an idea of maybe I could actually get this accomplished. I have to say I traveled extremely fast moving in the morning, especially in the darkness. And I'm not sure why, uh, whether it's just the first miles that I'm headed out or just marching that early in the morning and the kind of darkness of the early morning, no one else on the trails. It's just really easy to move very, very quickly along the trail. I was able to march more than 10 miles before the sun actually came up that day. Along my travel, I have to confess that really my first 35 miles on the march were really uneventful. I would actually say very pleasant. Um, in that regard, the stoic toughening training aspect of this march didn't hit me until much later. Unfortunately, to my shock, on mile 38 when I stopped to change my socks, I realized that an unsecured pouch on my pack left me with three socks. Now I have to make this clear that that wasn't three pairs of socks, and it wasn't three socks in my pack. That was the two wet socks on my feet and the one dry sock in my pack. So I stopped and tried to air out my socks the best I could, and I faced the hard reality of having to march 12 more miles, maybe up to four more hours, with a wet sock on my foot. Now at this point in time, I've already developed hot spots on my feet, so I realized, you know, blisters are actually inevitable. And I made the hard choice to say I was doing so well, moving so fast, that I would just tolerate blisters from that march and get it done. I was really wanting to accomplish that task and march 50 miles within those 20 hours. So throwing on the dry sock on my worst foot and putting back on a damp sock on the other, I laced up my boots and we headed back on the trail. Now I have to confess the real stoic aspect of the march really started to engage right there at mile marker 38 and it lasted till about mile marker 45. Now I'm sure a lot of people have this experience but it's when that dark voice in the back of your head creeps in and tells you all the reasons why it would be acceptable to stop. So my questions that I had continually asking myself was what I was I the questions I had that I was continually asking myself was what was I doing spending all day Saturday marching when I could be home with the wife and my little girls? I had already marched over 40 miles at this point, so what was I truly trying to prove? Did I really need to, to march 50 miles in a day? And I found those miles, those seven miles in particular, very, very rough. And it was really a constant battle with myself to kind of suppress my self-doubts and all those questions about why I should quit and why I shouldn't continue along the way. By mile marker 45, my mood drastically increased. I reached this point in time realizing that I had less than two hours of marching left to go. Not only that, is I reached it during a point of the time where I realized I could finish this march before the setting of the sun, and that really gave me great encouragement. It was at this point in the march that my attitude drastically shifted. I have to say I really encountered really a stoic tranquility. Here I was, fatigued from being awake since 3 o'clock in the morning. My feet were blistered and painful. I was tired. I was exhausted. But I was happy. I was content. Here I was, pushing into territory that was personal best in terms of time and distance for me. I was happy that I was accomplishing things that many other people will never attempt in their life. Oh. This is nothing if this is nothing but pain at this point. Two miles left, a little over two miles. And really my endurance of those really painful miles led me to a point where I realized that I could truly accomplish what I had set out to do. And really my limits in terms of my physical and mental ability was much greater than I initially thought. It really made me ponder the question of how many of us could really be as great as Hercules and do the feats of Hercules if we only dare. A lot of the times we're only held back by our own self-doubt. That we tell ourselves consistently that we shouldn't go on, we shouldn't push ourselves further. And a lot of that is really just fear of success. 
And what could we really do if we decided to go out there, train consistently, and push harder, and try to really expand our own capabilities? Distance. I've become the bull. 50 miles. 15 hours, 47 minutes, 52 seconds later, it ended. I became the bull. I have to admit that I ended my journey in much better physical condition than I expected. Other than the blisters on my feet, I had the physical capability of continuing the march further down the trail. It was something that I decided to leave to another day and another challenge. But it gives me hope that I can truly expand my capabilities even further. So the question now is who can do better? Who can march faster? And who among you are willing to take on this challenge? Now for many of you that will just get into the practice of rucking, 50 miles may be an unachievable goal. To put this in context, I marched over 1,300 miles over the last year to prepare myself for this type of march. So if you decide to get in to the activity of stoic toughening training, please set realistic standards. But over time, yes, you can challenge yourself and eventually, step by step, gradually training and preparing yourself, you too could become the bull. With a 50 mile challenge complete, I will continue my hard winter training. I'll continue to train over the winter and I'm gonna look for a date sometime in the spring to challenge myself to go even further. This time I'm gonna set my mark at 64 miles, a distance once covered by the great military educational theorist Captain Alden Partridge. And that will be another task that will truly challenge not only my physical capabilities, but how well I can handle the mental hardship of the path, and if I can prove myself resilient to overcoming my own self-doubts. I hope this video has inspired you to take on this challenge, become a bull yourself, or develop your own challenges in stoic toughening training. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to subscribe to The Evolving Warfighter for more videos on military self-development and military history. Until next time, focus on your self-development so we can ensure we can dominate the modern battlefield.